You are looking live at Ice Time in Newburgh, New York, where Orange County West is getting set to take on Friends Academy in girls high school varsity hockey. Hi everybody, it's Joe Rizzo. Glad to bring you the action on a warm winter day with a lot of rain. But after long cold spells, we've broken into the 40s. Lots of rain on this Thursday with ice in the forecast for the next day. Perhaps the scheduling gods allowing us to get this one in. OCW in the white jerseys. They have black numerals and orange trim. They're varied pants still at this point, but mostly black and a couple of different helmet and glove colors, but nonetheless, a team united. Friends Academy equipped in black jerseys with bright red numbers and white trim. They have black pants, black socks, a red stripe on the socks with white trim. Also varied colors on the helmets. OCW with a tight grouping in this one. Nine forwards, four defensemen. At least that's the way that they could plan it out with 13 skaters and their goalie who is, let's see if she's over there, getting warmed up, you could see her. Emmy Landolina will get you the lineups when they get out there. In the meantime, the pucks have been collected. The referees are checking the respective nets. They've put 20 minutes on the clock, so I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe we're playing two 20-minute halves due to the delayed start. Friends Academy, the Quakers, got here about 10 minutes before the originally scheduled start of the game, which was supposed to be about 5.15. Now, if you're watching this live and you're in the East, you know it's about 5.39. So maybe we're doing something here with 20-minute halves, because 20 minutes would be an unusual amount of time for this level of hockey. So I'm gonna guess 20 minute halves to try to keep ice slots in there. Here looks like the lineup. PJ Jacobus at center, Easton Merrick on the right wing, Skylar McFarlane on the left, Rachel Lee and Taylor Altman behind, and Emmy Landolina, number 12 in the nets. Orange County West and Friends Academy, the Quakers. Orange County West is just Orange County West. We're going to give them all kinds of nicknames throughout and maybe even take a fan poll as to what OCW should be called. They have the colors of the Cincinnati Bengals who are playing in the Super Bowl. So we could call them maybe the Bengals at one point if they are dominating the game. And in warm-ups, it did look like the Friends Academy goaltender uh, might not have uh, an awful lot of experience there. So we'll see how all of this pans out. Underway at ice time. OCW sends it in. East Merrick, the first to get there, comes to Skyler. Redirected in front by PJ and it goes wide. Jacobus will skate around and send it to the point. High, low, Altman and Merrick. Merrick, wrist shot, whistled wide. Comes all the way to the left point and Rachel Lee keeps it in. Goes around the end line for PJ. Jacobus centering in front. It hit off one person. Rebound scored. Easton Merrick backhands it in. And OCW jumps out to the quick lead. 32 seconds into the game. They'll change all five. Well, both teams. Let's 
Second face-off is a win for Addison Costello. Avery breaks in. She's going to take a wrist shot and fire it wide. They'll play with it behind the end line. That's Avery again. She sends it to the point. This is Ella Herzog centering pass. It hit a Friends Academy skate. They'll battle for it there. OCW dominating possession early, and this might be a theme. Ella sends it. Good play there as they sent it through the slot, and the one-timer went wide by McMahon. Comes to the point. Rachel sends it toward the net. It's redirected away. Behind the net, Addison in front to Avery. One-timer, pad save. Avery will take it out. Rachel fires it. It's in the goalie's pads and tapped in. So Addison Costello with that one. A couple of lefties coming out. Merrick and Costello get the first two for OCW. They'll change it up. 18.36 left. I think they're doing halves. I think it's going to be a first half, second half deal because that's an unusual amount of time, as we said. That's an NHL period length, and they never play those here. That's due to the truncated start, I believe. Luisa Rizzo on the faceoff. She wins it. It moves forward. The Friends Academy bench door is open. they got to close that. And they're just standing there and ignoring that. Rizzo and Tolman will approach. And Raylan is on the left wing. And she is going to get that. Volano can't hold on. It goes to the point. Pinching in there was Grace Matone. Sends it behind the end line. Tolman the first in pursuit. Now off the half boards. Rizzo's going to pick it up. She's looking for somebody but gets it taken away. It comes to the point but kept in. Still kept in. Tolman shovels it toward the net. Friends get it out, and the Quakers send it deep. No icing on the tip. And after two minutes and seven seconds, the Quakers have gotten the puck into OCW territory for the first time, and they will have a face-off down there as icing is the call, and they'll change it up. 17.43 left. We're going to say first half. We're guessing that this game is in halves. We'll have to keep reiterating that to you along the way since it's so unusual. And it is just a guess, but... I'm feeling like it's a good guess. I don't think they're playing three 20-minute periods, but two 20-minute halves would make a lot more sense at this point to try to get the game in after a start that occurred about 30 minutes after. Here comes Jacoba. She's going to have a breakaway. She comes in toward the right dot, looking to pass, and she does. The sportsmanship already underway for OCW. That is good coaching and smart players. That one sent in, icing waved off. And they will break out, will OCW. Jacobus tips it at neutral ice. She's gonna skate in unabated and she's gonna look to maybe pass it, which she does. One pass, two pass, and then tapped in. Not sure if it was PJ or Skyler McFarlane that got that, Jacobus or McFarlane. They both had sticks there and made a couple of passes before the goal. So that'll push it to 3 0. 1703, first half. Yes, halves. And you could see that OCW is a highly skilled team to the credit of the hardworking young ladies out there wearing the white jerseys. And the Quakers have some players out there with some experience and some with. A different level of experience, including their netminder. And there's no need to show anybody up where it's just girls playing hockey. So we like the sporting posture being shown right at the beginning and good awareness by the OCW coaching staff, Coach Landolina and company. They move it around through the offensive zone. And the Quakers send it out of play. So there'll be a face off to the goaltender's right. 16-29 first half. 3 nothing, OCW. When they break down in their cheers, it's 1-2-3 West. So I guess we like to call us call ourselves West. But if they do well today, which it appears they will, they might be the Bengals. Altman's going to take a slapper. It's redirected off a glove in front and goes in. It looked like 
Let's see, we could see who leads the Selly. It looked like maybe Natalie McMahon on that one got a piece, and that goal is going to stand, so that'll push it to 4-0. Friends a little late getting out on the change there, so the referee will just blow it dead on the face-off. And it's important that the referees also have a little bit of awareness here to help some of the lesser experienced players. We want to do things that are good for girls hockey. Quakers play with it and neutralize, and it's chipped in by Addison. She tries to pick it off again. Avery's going to bring that one in offside. Whistle in a stoppage of play. 15.58 left in the first. We're going to say half, just to remind you. We'll change it up. Rizzo at center. Tolman on the right wing. Milano on the left. Lee and Herzog, the defense pair. Lefty and righty, respectively. Face off one to the near side, and Rachel's going to pick this up and send it forward. Raylan sends it into the corner for Amy. Amy will skate, center it around, put it at the net, stick the side. Amy still with it, one on three, now four below the end line there. And the one that stayed sentry in the front will get it. Rizzo knocks it away. She's still battling with number three, who eventually sends it around the net. 77 picks it up, but Rizzo picks it right off, looking for Tolman. Now maybe looking to go to the point, she does. Ella dumps it in. Riz stays back to cover, but she'll be able to move with alacrity throughout most of the ice, and she does. It's sent out now by the Quakers. 15.09, first, first half, four nothing OCW. From ice time in Newburgh. Sent all the way across for Riz. She's gonna turn and look to get it set up. Goes high, low, takes a spill. And Rachel Lee will power it down low and send it below the end line. 77 will pick it up, look for somebody, loses it in her skates. Amy's over there, can't get to it first, but it goes to the far side boards. Rachel stayed up, and she sends it in. Now she and Riz switch, and Riz heads down low. Amy goes to the point. Ella sends it cross crease, and it goes through Raylan's skates. Goes chipped off the boards. Rachel soccered it in for a moment but couldn't keep it in and friends will break toward neutral ice but Ella snuffs that out. Amy comes in over the right wing. Tolman looking. She'll slam on the brakes. Backhand pass. Stick save and brought around the net. OCW changing. PJ pulls that one down. She's got Amy in front. Still looking. Shovels it there but they protect the house through the Quakers. Sent at the net. And 77, she's got some legs and some skill, and she's going to skate this one. That's 27, rather. So 27 and 77 look like they have some skill for the team in black and red, the Quakers. It's going to be a tough road to hoe from here if they want to bring it back on the scoreboard, but the game's not about scores all the time. Wrist shot tipped wide. 4 nothing. OCW from Ice Time in Newburgh, New York. 13.30 left, first half. This game being played in halves, best as I can tell. Centering feed for Skyler. She tipped it off the backhand. Easton's going to get this. She scored the first goal, 32 seconds in. She's in front, passing back and forth with PJ, and they put that one in. So that'll push it to five. Very clearly, they're not going to take shots or chances unless there's four to five passes per possession or per scoring chance at least. And at five nothing here, less than seven minutes into the game, the sporting posture has taken place. You're not gonna see any celebrations really of any kind. As well, that is the way it ought to be. Merrick over the right point sends it between the points for Matone, who tries to shovel it forward. Eventually, she gets it down and below the line. Jacobus gets there, taps it once. 
goes toward Merrick's side. They bank it off the board to the breakout point, and the Quakers dump it through two zones and into the defensive zone deftly. No icing on the play, and a lot of room for the breakout. There's a collision at the blue line, but incidental contact, and the players for both sides seem to be okay. Merrick is going to get this, bring it back, still looking for somebody coming down. She goes to Altman, Altman to Merrick, Merrick looking, still looking and skating. They'll cycle it around, here's Costello, Altman at the right point, tries to send it low. Costello comes to get it, they go high, low, high, low, high, low, 17 and 41. They go toward the slot now to move it around there, and the Quakers will chip it out. Under 12 minutes now, first half. 5-0, OCW, it's been an orange crush from the drop of the puck today. Sent at the net and covered up, and the Quakers goaltender with a nice save there is on the redirection and gets the cheer from her teammates and the fans in attendance, as well she should because that young lady has strapped on the pads today, and that could be the toughest and most thankless job in any sport, goaltending. It is not easy to stand back there. Centering feed, Natalie tried to put it in, and we think she had one before. Rachel keeps it in at the point, and they just ping pong it right back to her, chips forward, and here's gonna be 27 skating. She's gonna get it into the offensive zone. Trying to get around Ella Herzog is gonna be a trip, and that trip ends in not success. Avery tries to get pushed off the puck, but has plenty of others. Goes up the right wing for Natalie. She's got Addison with her. Addison will pursue it over the line. The Quakers have picked it up here a little bit on the good effort by their goaltender on the previous play. Rachel will send it at the net. Can't get it through traffic. Loose in front and brought toward the corner. Banked hard off the corner and almost out, but Costello, as she always seems to do, gets to that puck. This one now chipped out, one on three. Let's see if the Quakers decide to chase or change. They decide to chase 80%, change a smaller percentage. Avery will skate it in. It's three on one here, so she's gonna take her time and she will skate it all the way around, slam on the brakes, send it behind the net for Riz. Riz will over skate that one, couldn't get it quite on the stick. The embattled Quakers trying to get it out of their own zone, and they send it up but to the point. Avery jumps off for a change. That one fired from the point wide. Toman gets it. She centers it, but nobody there. Riz was coming late. Raylan sends it for Amy's direction. It's going to get sent to the point. Grace is there. She's going to take a slapper. Riz was looking for the redirect, but a Quaker skate got it on it first. Riz for Toman. Back to Toman, who takes a shot and a stick save. Sent all the way to the point, but Matone keeps it in. Sent at the net, but three knocks it down. Sent to the point and out. Let's see if that one is chased after. There's a battle for it there, but two orange beats one black. Orange is the new black. And you could check that one out on Netflix. This one's sent down, it's gonna be no icing because it was tipped by a Quaker. And Friends Academy get to it first, but Rizzo gets to it second, and she'll skate through three along the end boards. Still looking now, she'll skate it right to the front, send it for Raylan, who takes the one-timer that goes wide. Raylan goes up to the point for Taylor. Taylor will skate it and shoot it. Well, she wasn't really shooting it, she was sending it toward the Opposite post, centering pass, redirected by Amy Toman. A very highly skilled play there for the goal. It finds its way in, and that'll push it to six. So that line was out there for quite some time. Waited a while to get a shot on the net. And that 
makes it 6 0. 829 left. First half, yes, that's right, I said half. Orange establishing possession in the offensive zone. Goes to the point. Rachel sends it toward the net wide. You're going to see a lot of that where they're not necessarily shooting it. They're just sending it at the net and recovering it later. Centering pass. One-time attempt by Skyler. She couldn't get the stick on it. Easton fakes by one. She moves it out through the slot. Still with it. She goes to the point. Ella fires one wide. Goes to the opposite side. Skyler shot. Save. Easton's going to pick it up at the circle. She's going to send it to the left point. Rachel will fire it toward traffic, but it's knocked down in front. Recovered there. PJ gets it, dumps it to the corner. Will she recover it herself? Jacobus sends it around, and it will go all the way to Lee at the point, and she will ping pong it right back and forth. PJ chases it down, sends it right back from whence it came. McFarlane over there gets a piece of it. Easton gets it again. Comes through one. We'll send it to the point. Ella and Easton will play with it high and low. Easton sends it to the middle. PJ stops. And there's a shot by Skyler. And McFarlane puts that one in. So clearly they have the instructions of plenty of possession, plenty of passes before putting it on net. And that pushes the score to, it says five up there, I think it's to six. Let's see if they put it up there. Score not important in this game. Six fifty-seven first half. And the Quaker center, number five, who hustled in to take that draw, was giving her netminder <laughs> A bit of encouragement before she hustled to the face-off circle. Good job, Mom and Dad. You're raising a wonderful young lady. There's a one-timer in front, and that's Natalie that's going to put it in. Natalie McMahon. Now, there was a little celly there. That might be Nat's first. I think that's why we get the little celly. So I don't think she got it before. That's the one thing in... A situation like this where you might get a little silly when somebody tends the net for the first time. So good job, 19. Tally on the board is going to stay at 5, and I think everybody's fine with that. We won't worry about what it is on here. The win-loss part of this game is going to be a fait accompli, but there's a, a hard wrist shot that whistles wide. And Emmy almost got her first action of the game. So Landolina has to stay ready. The one thing she's going to want is that zero up on the board at the end of it all. This one sent up and out. Friends with a short bench, they have 10 skaters, so they could do one line and one defense pair in reserve. This one picked off and kept in at the blue line, even if it's not, the referee is doing the right thing and giving him the benefit of the doubt of a couple of inches. So good job by the referees, understanding the temperature, the time, and the place. I want girls to have fun playing what many of us consider to be the greatest game in the world, hockey. And if some of them have come to the game a little late, then kudos to them because this is a game of high skill. Rizzo's going to skate in alone, not even looking at the net, sends it over, and there's a goal. Raylan puts it in and takes a spill. So Raylan, who's cheering section is definitely watching while 
She is not going to take the celebration on the ice. She is certainly giving the Volano clan at home. Yes, Lisa Smith, we're talking to you. A chance to pump the fist. Riz moves it in over the left wing, wearing 55 today. When her jersey comes in, we'll see a 13 on there, I believe. Ella's going to send it toward the net, and it's rebuffed and sent out. They're going to wave off the icing, and Rachel Lee will come down to play it. Riz over center. She's just going to skate it right through, and again, not even looking at the net. She'll skate it around one end and send it to Ella at the point. Herzog, 15, waiting, looking, waiting. Sends it low for Riz. She'll skate through it and send it behind for Amy. Riz again, still looking, still looking. She'll go back to Ella at the point. And she's, Rizzo is just playing point guard at this time. She knows nothing about basketball, but she's playing point guard, just kind of dribbling it around and Definitely playing a pass-first, non-shoot point guard at this point. Ella, back to Riz. Riz will skate it at the net. Sends it over for Amy for the one-timer, and she sends it wide. Might have, been a, might have gotten a piece of it with the stick. Did 61. And OCW will change as we hit the three-minute mark remaining in half. Number one, this game started about a half hour late because the Quakers ran into a little traffic on the way. Nonetheless, they hustled, got dressed, and I think to keep the ice slots going here at ice time, they decided to play halves. There's a save. That's been, or, oh, did it actually find its way in? She got a piece of it, but it looks like Costello gets that one. And a bunch of the OCW players will head off. Looks like Easton, Amy, and Avery have departed. So that'll shorten the bench a little bit. Both teams now with the same amount of reserves as one line of players has departed. Not worrying about the score so much here. It's from a one-loss standpoint, going the way of the Orange Rush today as they rush in. And mostly this game is about sportsmanship and development. Matone fires that one. It hits PJ stick or somebody else's and deflects wide. PJ and Addison playing with it. Now it goes to the point. Taylor's going to get that. She sends it across the slot for eventually Skyler. Quakers get a couple of sticks on it and then three eventually beat one Jacobus who's now going to head off for a change and she will sub out for Riz. The two centers remaining. Slapper attempt smothered a bit. Little pushing and shoving in the corner. One of the friends loses her stick. Riz gets it again. Leaves it for Skyler who skates it through the top of the slot. Can't keep it in there. And the friends are gonna jump forward with the puck and send it into the offensive zone. But they don't have much attack on there to follow it up. Their victories today are gonna be puck carries and being in the right position and trying to make some plays when you can. OCW's measuring their game on sportsmanship, possession, and passing. Here comes a break for the Quakers. Let's see if Emmy gets her first shot on net. She can't do it because Grace comes back. Three gets it, she tries to fire, but Riz blocked it with the left shin pad. And that one's sent in. This is going to be an icing the other way. So the Quakers will get a face-off in the offensive zone, and 
Look at this. This is how you do it, folks. This is how you do it. So that line of, well, let's see, is it Amy? Looks like Amy, Easton, and Avery have switched jersey. This is when you have a coaching staff and players that really understand the game and what it's all about, not wins and losses. PJ to Natalie. Raylan coming in, not even looking at the net, and she leaves it for Nat, but time expires in half number one. So when we turn it back on, you're gonna see a little bit of a different look out there. Easton, Amy, and Avery have taken a heel turn. This is like the WWE. They've defected. And now they have made new friends. As they've defected to Friends Academy for half number two. The drama builds. So when they come back, to play. We will have a second 20 minute half. If you're just joining in, we are glad you are here. It's Joe Rizzo from Ice Time in Newburgh, New York. Orange County West in the white jerseys, black numbers, orange trim. Friends Academy in the black jerseys with red numerals and white trim. The score, not important in this game, as there's varying experience levels out there for the girls. And to make things a little more interesting for everybody, three of the forwards for OCW hustled off, switched into their black jerseys, and are going to play for Friends Academy. Good stuff. We like to see it. Also good stuff right there is Emmy Landolina, a seasoned and experienced netminder. Goes to her counterpart who is embarking on her hockey journey and in the middle of the game gives her encouragement and that is a beautiful thing to see. That is a classy kid from a classy family. And she's a triplet, believe it or not. She's not the only triplet on the team. Now, interestingly enough, the goalies have switched sides, but the teams will skate to the same side, underway, in half number two. So another interesting twist is the friends will now be shooting on their own goalie. So the Quakers against their own goalie, the pace has picked up as you would expect. Taylor at the right point, she's gonna take a slapper at her teammate, yes. So, keeping it in the zone for the moment. Natalie over there, Grace takes a slapper, redirected through two. Riz trying to pick this up. It's sent toward the point, and the Quakers get it out. Let's see if they change. They should be hustling off for a change, but maybe they're enjoying that shift. Whiffed on it there for a moment to Taylor. Over to Natalie, she gets dumped in the middle. They're not gonna call penalties here. That's not a, a check or an interference. That's incidental contact right there. In another day, in another time, they might 
whistle that one down. Here comes Taylor, centers it for Riz, or no, actually centered it sort of to herself. Goes back to the point, Rachel shoot traffic redirected. Natalie on the near side half boards. She will send it to Taylor between the points, but a little bit too strong. Altman comes back into neutral ice and all the way into her own zone. Banks it hard off the boards. Dumped forward and they'll move it in. Will the Quakers looking for somebody. Wrist shot whistled off of, I don't know if it was Riz or Rachel, but one of them got it. 55 or five, a lot of nickels out there. And one of them was able to get a piece of it. That one sent down for an icing. They will change will the Quakers and their three new teammates for whom they traded with 26 seconds left in the first half. Yes, half, I did say half. There's 18, 12 left in the second half of this game. They're playing two 20 minute halves. Their three new teammates are at forward. Easton Merrick wins that one too strong, but her teammate will pick it up and skate all the way in. Backhander, there's a big save. That was Addison. Wrist shot, another save, rebound, score. Addison puts it in. So, Emmy gets her first action of the game and it's in a flurry, but her usual teammate is the one to put it in. So Costello against the net. I'm not sure who's team that counts for, and I don't really care at this point, and I don't think anybody watching does either. They found a way to turn this into a positive experience for all the girls out there. Centered one-timer, PJ got, a, got it from Addison, and Emmy makes the save. So in a case where there could be some upset or disappointed or discouraged faces, instead we have smiles abound from all the different uniforms. One time attempt is missed right there. It goes to the point Ella will bound it in and send it around. Avery's gonna pick this one up, gets bumped by Skyler right there. And I can hear Coach Jeremy laughing, redirected in front by PJ. And it goes wide to the corner. Amy gets a piece of it but can't move it out. And Addison sends her right back in. Quakers move it behind their own end line. Avery comes all the way down. That one off the dasher. Easton's going to try to get on her horse. And she's got the horses if she can get through. But Mara can't get through Costello. So as the OCW announcer, this interesting role as Skyler comes in up the left wing. There's a dive, wrist shot steered away. Easton with the dive, centered in front. Amy's gonna try to bat that one out. Almost bat it right to Riz, but she couldn't hold it long enough to keep it in. Banked to the point. Flapper bounces in front, rebound covered up. And Boy, you, bet, you better bet your bottom dollar that there's going to be no late poking under that goalie's glove today. <laughs> Otherwise, some teammates might not be talking to each other in the locker room. Riz will take the face off. If you're just joining in, You've missed a lot. We'll try to recap you. Grace with a slapper that's knocked down in front by the Quakers. Tries to get off another one, but she's got a lot of company over there. Three Quakers on the far side, and they'll reverse it back over there to the breakout point, but can't get it through. Grace with a slapper gets all the way through, but Emmy knocks it away. Yes, she's shooting on her own goalie if you just are joining in. Taylor tries to fire it through traffic. Can't get it anywhere, but to Raylan, who sends it around the end line to Natalie. She had a milestone tally earlier in the game, did number 19, as the Quakers send it out and they dump it. Yes, they'd be shooting on their own goalie when they get the offense cranked up, which they knew well at some point. Wrist shot from the point, can't get all the way through traffic. Wiz looked like she was tripped by 
her teammate there. It comes through neutral, uh, not into neutral ice actually, kept in, skating all around, taken down, was 27. Grace got it, that one sent down, and it will be icing. So, if you're looking for the score, forget about it. We're not giving you the score. There's really no relevant score at this point. The OCW is gonna end up with a W in the box at the end. That's the score. What you're seeing is something much, much, much better. Far greater. Battle for the face-off, and it's gonna be won by the Quakers. Easton Merrick had it there. She's playing the role of one of the Quakers today for this half as the Orange Rush send it in for an icing. And they'll go all the way back down to the other end of the ice. And there's Rachel Lee giving encouragement to her new goaltender. Brilliantly done, coaches, brilliantly done. Easton wins the faceoff to the point, but sends it a little too far. And Addison's gonna get there first. She'll try to circle the net, which she does. Centered in front, but couldn't get it quite to PJ. Easton's gonna get it, and she'll hustle it up the right wing. Turns and still burns, but draws all the white jerseys available. That one kept in on side. Comes around to the near side. We're under 14.24 left in the game. Turned into an exhibition and a fun learning experience for both sides. And a wonderful display of sportsmanship. There it goes in front, and Addison and PJ have been working on that one-timer pass from behind the end line, and they finally do convert it on Emmy Landolina. So there's a little locker room bragging rights there. They change it up. We'll go all the way behind the OC net, come up to Nat at the left wing. Can't Keep it in, and that comes in offside, and no trip there, not in, not, nothing intentional. They were playing the puck, and plus it came after the whistle. So they'll face it off in front of the OCW bench. Avery wins that one back, but it's sent forward and picked up by Taylor, who sends it forward for Riz and Raylan. Taylor gets it at the point. She's gonna skate it up between the points. She'll switch places with Grace. Grace sends it to the far corner. Natalie McMahon will get there first and gets a stick on it, but Avery Lewick will grab that. She's done the WWE heel turn along with Amy Tolman and Easton Merrick. They've switched jerseys and they're playing for the other team. The goalies have switched as well and that's created a fun and competitive atmosphere for all the girls on the ice. Natalie's gonna get this, she's gonna fire that one down. It's gonna be an icing, unless it takes a crazy bounce and they do wave that one off. Amy banks it behind the end boards. It goes toward the far side and Avery is gonna skate this one up. Grace tries to force her to the outside, then picks her pocket. Watch your wallet around Matone, nine. She might get you. She, let's see if she could pick that one off. It goes to the point. PJ grabs it, but Jacobus has to turn around. Sends it to Milano, who leaves it for Altman, who's gonna skate a right down Broadway and go in against her netminder, and she hits the left post and in, and now the, and now the goalies, they're mixing it up afterward. They're mixing it up over there. Altman beats Landolina. They 
a saintly exchange. Addison around the net, centers for Skyler, wrist shot, stick save, covered up. Twelve oh five now remaining in half number two. OCW and Friends Academy. TJ wins the faceoff. Slapper comes to Ella, and that is gloved down. No rebound by Emmy. TJ in the center circle with Skyler in the slot. Addison on the half boards. Ella, who has the puck there, and Rachel. Rachel Slapper, redirected but saved by Landolina. Chipped out now by the Quakers. They'll try to run it forward and see if they can get some possession. It's moved around the far side boards and it comes all the way around. Quakers retreat to grab it. Picked off over there by PJ. She'll battle for it along the end line, but loses it. Still with it is three. Puck battle there, two on one, is going to go to OCW. Addison gets it, was looking to go to the point, curls around. 27 has some life there. Gets her stick caught in the boards. Can't get it out for a while. Loose puck in front. Let's see who can get it. Still loose and covered up. PJ had a hack on it, Skyler had a whiff on it, and Addison was looking to sit at the right doorstep unmarked in case it squirted out, which it didn't. Grizz will jump into the dot. And Volano in the slot. Grizz wins it back to Taylor. Grace will take the slapper. Three knocks it away. She's been one of the standouts for the Quakers among their regular lineup here. Quakers move it out. There's the dish and 27. Then the other standout for the Quakers moves it into offensive zone ice. She's got a lot to get by and she can't get through Riz who comes in on the break, gets through two. She sends it forward for Raylan but just missed her stick there. Raylan goes back to Riz. Riz goes through the slot, still just looking to pass here. And Grace gets it between the points and sends it to the corner for Natalie. Natalie sends it to the point for Grace, but a little bit too strong, and it's cleared out. No icing as the puck is on its oblong end and just rolling as we hit the 10-22 mark left in the game. And here comes Taylor Altman. She'll skate it all the way through the zones and come to the top of the slot. She's looking for another one. Wrist shot, pad save, rebound battled for. Natalie with a trip there, maybe a little push trip, whatever you call it. Centered in front, nobody could get their stick on it, and Emmy covers it up. OCW for a change. This comes off for PJ. Offensive zone draw, and they will now change all five in white and black. If you're just joining us, the score not important. It's going to go OCW's way. Here comes Easton Merrick. Asked before the game, how do you pronounce your last name? M-E-R-I-K. -E -E Asked before the game, how do you pronounce your last name? Because the announcer would like to get it right. She said, I don't know. I don't know. That's what, that's what she said. I had uh, the wonderful... Rachel Lee uh, do the asking for me and uh, that was the answer so we're going with Merrick so if the Merricks have a different way of pronouncing their name I apologize but uh, I did ask and it's not the conventional spelling that I've seen of Merrick so I figured it was worth an ask OC Dub centering pass Addison to PJ Skyler over there, she fires one, blockered away by Emmy. This is Easton, there she is. She gets through and gets the puck back, still going. Rachel knocks it off of her stick, but can't keep it away from her. 20 in the slot, can't get it all the way through. It comes to the point and battled for there. Addison's gonna get it and she's gonna skate in 
Let's see if she gets by one. She does. She's in on their goaltender. Backhander puts it through the five hole. Costello, ho, 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 ho. That was nasty. So 17 hits the five hole against 12. You could do the math. So 17 minus five equals 12. And now the other two defectors are out there for the Quakers. One of them has the puck, that's Avery, and Amy is in the slot. Avery skating around, but she gets a big battle. In this slot, they can't, can't pull the trigger. That's one of the properly dressed Quakers, not the imposter Quakers. They, I'm not sure they've gotten one or more shots on their customary teammate yet, but they'd like to. Here they come, drop pass for eventually Avery, who came in late. Amy hustling back to cover, wrist shot, glove down and knocked away. That's a big save right there. That, that shot had everything on it. So good experience for our young netminder number 61 in black. And she makes another save with the stick right there on a shot that was ticketed. And suddenly OCW has to bang it out and they're gonna take the icing here. And it'll be another offensive zone draw for the Quakers. We're looking to dent the net with 7.33 left in the game. This game being played at ice time in Newburgh, New York. It's not as frigid as usual here, possibly because the outside temperatures are 40 and rainy. Thankfully that we're not in the ice storm scheduled for Friday. Nonetheless, the Quakers did have a late arrival. And I think that's what cost us three 15-minute periods and turned this into two 20-minute halves. With 26 seconds left in the first half, OCW sent three of their players off to the locker room, at which time we did not know, but they were instructed to switch to their black jerseys. And when they repatriated the ice then, to my surprise, they did so in their black jerseys and did the WWE heel turn and are now playing for the other team. The goalie switched as well, and that's evened things up a fair amount. So a good experience, new friends being made, not just because it's Friends Academy, but they're, li they're taking it literally, I, I guess. And OCW is getting a little target practice on their own goalie. Addison chips it, but Emmy blockers it away. PJ centers for Addison. She turns and looks. Skyler is trying to move to the slot. Addison and PJ will cycle. They'll do a two-person cycle over there as they go back and forth, give and go. Wrist shot, one save, and then the rebound swept away. Addison for Jacobus. They ping-pong it back and forth. Costello's the lefty, Jacobus the righty. That one sent at the net. It hit the side piping and was covered by Landolina. They'll change all five. Will the OC dubs. And what is that? Uh, uh, there was the buzzer over there. I don't know if there's and they're, they're forced to be now they're still playing. Okay, there was some confusion as to why the buzzer rang over there as we were down to five minutes. It looked like, well, let's see. It looked like we were down to 6.10 when I just glanced at the clock, but now five minutes. Maybe they'll just play it in running time at this point. Again, if you're just joining us, we appreciate that. You're seeing a show in sportsmanship here and a story about girls playing hockey and not about wins and losses as the Friends Academy Quakers in black break down into the offensive zone. Yes, against their own goalie. Louisa Rizzo comes back. She's going to skate it around her own net, and she's going to skate it right down the middle of the ice and come in on her own goaltender. Backhand, and 
Shiri gets one save, gets her own rebound, tries to stuff it in front, but Emmy knocks that one down. It's a nice rush by Riz. She picked it up, getting back defensively from her center position, skated it all the way through, but was rebuffed by Landolina, who is usually her teammate, and those two have something incredibly in common. They are both triplets born a few weeks apart and both have two older triplet brothers. And yes, they are on the same team, at least now. They've been competitors in the past, perhaps without that knowledge. Here comes Easton Merrick playing for the other guys. Backhander and she puts it in. And the friends have their first of the game and the Selly is underway. Easton took it, got through a couple of zones, got spun around, sent the backhander on net and she's gonna take the Selly to the vociferous bench for the Quakers. 3.46 left and it's a running clock now. So in real time, in three minutes and 37 seconds, this thing will have the final whistle. Until then, that's picked up a little life. And you can hear the chattering and some of the giggles. It's good to see. So the the outcome of the game from a one-loss fashion was going to be a fait accompli at, at, you know, we saw it shortly after the drop of the puck and sportingly the coaches figured out a way to make it a good experience for all the girls out there. And what they did was they took three of the Orange County West players and had them switch jerseys at halftime because this, this game, being played in two halves. And they switched goaltenders. So the possession has still gone very much the way of the white team, but the team in black has enjoyed probably a little more than they're used to with some good natured girls who have some pretty decent hockey skill joining their ranks for 20 minutes. Taylor shoots that one. Three knocks it down with the glove. Addison battling for it in front, leaves it for Skyler. She sends it toward the net, but can't get it through. It goes to the far corner. Riz gets it and goes right to the point for Rachel. They often play the high-low game, those two, in their teammate life, which they've been multiple times throughout the years. Know each other well, do 55 and five. Rizzo wearing 55 just for Perhaps today, she'll soon probably be back to her customary 13, we figure. Until then, 55. There's a trip right there. <laughs> They're not going to call. And they shouldn't call anything. As we're under 100 seconds left. But I mean, heck, at this point, somebody's rolling in, just tripping. Here's 27. She's going to fire that one at her net. Under big save and a nice cover. And she gets the... A head pass from Ella Herzog. And now some of her teammates are apologizing for the high shot. That's a very stout save right there. She kept her position, used the chest to knock it down, hustled down to cover it up before a rebound. OCW breaks out, Riz is gonna hustle in. She's got Raylan with her. Riz is going to come on net, try the backhander. She tries one shot. It was a right pad save, and the rebound squirts out. Raylan behind the net. Natalie also now over there comes toward the half boards, and Avery is going to steer this one through Riz and skate through the Ice Time logo at center ice, but it's going to be offside, and with 30 seconds left, that might quite be the end of it, unless they hustle into the dot. To do it again. There's jumps off the ice. 20 seconds now. Let's see if there's anybody else that jumps out there. Here comes PJ for the last 14 seconds. They win the face off. Do the 
Orange Rush, Orange Crush, the Bengals. Three, two, one. There's the final buzzer. So this one turned into a bit of fun. And we'll see who lines up where for the customary handshake at neutral ice. The goalies playing for the opposite team will patriate the lines of the teams for which they finished today rather than the teams for which they started today, I think. Uh, let's see. No, incorrect on the goalies, but the three OCW players who switched sides are going to stay on the side they finished at. And here comes one of the best and most sporting handshakes you will see. This is, once again, something I do not take for granted, having seen about a million hockey games at all levels, youth included, give or take 500,000. You can never take for granted the sportsmanship that may or may not be in play in games where there can be sometimes a significant gap in experience and accomplishment. And when that's the case, there's no reason for the coaches or the players to embarrass or discourage or do anything but help grow the game and make it fun and a good experience for every girl that's out there. And a testament to this coaching staff and the Quakers coaching staff for coming up with a way to do that on the fly. It can't be overstated that it's important. And it, I've seen it go very much the other way. And it's not good for the girls and it's not good for the game and it's not good for the parents and it's not good for the coaches. It's good for no one. So kudos there. The stars of the game are the coaching staffs and the sporting nature of the girls. Final score, not important. Didn't even keep track of it after it got to five. Most important, a win for a girls hockey today and I was glad to bring it to you. If you like what you are seeing and what you are hearing, there's all kinds of hockey content that now I'm posting and I'm glad to do it. So hit that subscribe button. And if you hit the alerts button, then every time I'm going live, you'll get an alert. And anytime there is content uploaded, you will get an alert. And typically what I will do is I will take a better copy of what you may have been watching live and upload it later on for a cleaner version where there might not be interruptions in the stream or the audio or anything like that. And those are the, go the ones that you're going to want to go back and watch and take a look at. And there's a whole bunch of different playlists on there, OCW, New Jersey Rockets, and even some coach interviews from the Rockets end. Not sure we're going to do that for OCW, but if we do, we'll bring that to you right here. Once again, OCW on the scoreboard gets the win over Friends Academy from Newburgh, New York at ice time. This is Joe Rizzo. Thanks for watching. Orange County West, girls hockey.